guys, I, th I think we did it. The merge, the surge, the scourge, the verge, the purge, the splurge. We got all six. And I think the question right now is, where do we start? <laughs> what is coming <laughs> on the near-term horizon? David made the excellent point earlier in the episode that all of these different urges are being worked on in parallel. But what can we expect in not the hard fork in March, but maybe the one after that and in more the uh, the the middle uh, time period here? 2024, 2025. What are, what are we trying to get done here? Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's useful to kind of take all of this information and distill it into a few like key themes, right? Like what is Ethereum trying to do in the medium term? Because I think um, you're going to have Tim on to talk about what comes in the in the next hard fork that'll be like super useful um, beyond like Deneb and and kind of the current version that we're we're forking in March. I think of there being like three important directions that we need to to make sure Ethereum is still marching in. The first is preserving the decentralization and censorship resistance, right? Like in my mind, this is kind of the core value prop. It has to be the the thing that all other decisions are downstream of because without it, it just like, I don't think that the, the blockchain makes that much sense. So starting there. And then also, I think the second theme that I, I feel is very important is kind of circling back to this Manhattan under construction analogy I was using before. Like we do want... Ethereum DA to be extremely valuable. We want it to have very high security properties, but we need to scale it in order to make sure that people don't move off Manhattan and like the construction is is basically enough that like keeping keeping the the pedal to the metal in terms of keeping the the rollups using Ethereum DA for their for the rollup. Um and then the third thing I think of is more of kind of almost a research direction like those those first two feel like very concrete. The, the third one is like, okay, we have these various centralization pressures that are pushing on the protocol in different ways, right? We have MEV, we have liquid staking and restaking, and, you know, there's all of this kind of the, these various pressure points, I would say, that need to be relieved. And figuring out the end game for each of those is like critical to moving forward. Um, so I think, I think starting, starting with censorship resistance still keeping the focus on DA as the rollup centric roadmap continues to to mature and then focusing on MEV restaking staking um and the kind of core end game proof of stake is is the right way to to think about the next couple of years to summarize kind of the the pattern that I see it's a lot of emphasis on settlement and specifically uh censorship resistant settlement uh, we we get into the world of improving Ethereum's execution with the Verge, but like in the mere in the medium term, is really we're focusing on um, the censorship resistant settlement of the Ethereum layer one and the scalability of execution on the Ethereum layer two, as it relates to settlement back onto the layer one. I'm really seeing just settlement as a as a big theme in Ethereum. Would you agree with that assertion, Mike? Yeah, I like to kind of take a step back and think okay, what is Ethereum good at, right? Like, what makes Ethereum's beer taste better? This is kind of like an agent <laughs> saying that that I think Jeff Bezos was, was talking about. And in my mind, it's like, Ethereum is great at being incredibly neutral, decentralized, censorship-resistant block space. I don't think Ethereum should try and kind of scale execution to the moon to because that's that's like kind of directly in contrast to the core value proposition of keeping solo stakers around. In the exact same vein, I don't think Ethereum should try and compete byte for byte and get like one gigabyte blocks, two gigabyte blocks in the next year, because again, you make concessions in terms of the decentralization and, and who can actually access this network. So yeah, I think both the the settlement layer of like the global internet of value is like a, a great vision for almost like a settlement layer centric roadmap. I think that's like, uh, it makes a ton of sense while still making DA good enough for for that blue chip for the super valuable L2 blob space. I think that's that's kind of the right framing. And also, I I think Ethereum as a community is like the huge thing that is is super valuable, right? Like Ethereum historically has been a group of people that all care about this thing. And you know, we were talking about decentralized governance. We're talking about different teams contributing in different ways, like this whole grassroots movement of building out the roadmap and, and contributing in your different ways. I think making sure that like the vision is firmly on maintaining and 
and building that community to be sure that the next wave, the next million, next hundred million, next billion users, like choose Ethereum and, and choose to to make it their, their crypto home. I think that's very important too. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.